I'm Sean O'Neill, Secretary of the Wingfield Residents Union. Tell us a bit about the campaign to save the Wingford. Uh, save the Wingford is a retaliation to decades of demolition, decades of underinvestment in working class communities in Glasgow. It's also a very current response to the homelessness crisis in Scotland um, and the housing emergency and really a protest against the scandal of empty homes when thousands are on the streets and languishing on waiting lists. And ultimately it's about power. It's about taking power from these third party businesses like the Wheatley Group who mismanage your community um, and bringing it back to the community itself and to the people where it belongs. And what are Wheatley proposing to do here? In the Wingford? Well, they've dressed it up in many ways a bit like modernisation and all that, but when it comes down to it, it's a cut to social housing. It's 600 social homes are going to be demolished um, at much inconvenience to the tenants who have been displaced, and then they've got to be replaced with less than half the amount of social housing, and then uh, this mid market rent, which is unaffordable for people like me. So. It's clearly a gentrification agenda that's been forced upon us here. What's the reaction of the community and the folk who live in, in the towers been like to propose demolition? Aye, it's been quite a journey for a lot of them. Um, the campaign was born for the community and for the high-rise tenants that are at the front lines of this, really, because it's them who are getting driven for their homes to make way for this. Um, local legends like William Doolan have been part of the social fabric of the Wingford for decades. Uh, he's the chair of the union, um, so there's been a lot of good people involved. and They've took it in their stride, a lot of them, and others have understandably just left because they've been bullied at the door. Um, and we've had support across the community, we've had new members for the, the union and supporters as well who it's meant a lot to have that for them because when you're up against monopoly power and the influence and wealth that Wheatley have, um, to have that support, just saying keep going, and yeah. um, what you're doing is right, it's priceless for a, somebody who's living and breathing this campaign, so they can play really for how the community's responded. And what's the campaign look like? What have you, what have you done to try and resist? Um, we've thrown yeah. everything at it, really, like, for two years the, the residents union was having public meetings and trying to have a proper dialogue with Wheatley about the future of Wineford um, and at a certain point it just became clear that they were stonewalling us like eternally so we had to take it up a level and that's really where Save the Wineford came for as it became clear that it wasn't just about these houses but about the community centre and really the encroachment of the West End on the north of Glasgow um, that's when we realised like we had to take it up a level and have direct action ultimately because I think history's on our side and somebody needs to stop this because it's been happening for too long. We really want to take out the community centre as well? Aye, so the, well, the first consultation they put out, they said what would you like to see the hub replaced with? Uh, assuming that people want to lose something that's been, again, the heart of the community for a long, long time and it's got a social history itself. Like The hub was saved 12, 13 years ago when it was two schools that the council wanted to rip away and they did, um, but through direct action took by uh, the parents, they saved the hub for us and so ever since then it's been, like like I said, the heart of the community and a valued um, local amenity, but obviously the people in charge of this community only see the land value, so the hub's up for grabs as well, which is a disgrace. And you were saying before about the history, obviously long history of social cleansing in Glasgow, think about the Red Road and, and stuff. Do you think this is the latest chapter? Aye, uh, definitely is. It's the same people. Um, it's Wheatley Group, formerly GHA, who inherited the housing stock, beneficiaries of that daylight robbery of council housing in Glasgow 20 years ago. Uh, and since then it's just been a spree of demolition and displacement. Um, so I will next in line for that. What's Wheatley's reaction to your campaign being like, the direct action campaign, would you say? Um, lies, firstly, uh, censorship, and I don't use the words lightly, uh, a propaganda war as well. Um, they've showed themselves up really, uh, what their class interest is and, and the state power um, that supports them. They've actively colluded with Police Scotland to crush the campaign and 
Aye, they've, they've showed themselves up and it's been quite unfortunate really, but it's had to come out because this social housing thing has been too cosy and too nice uh -huh. for a long time and people have been living in fear of the landlords for too long, so it's about turning that on its head. You mentioned the police response. In communication between Police Scotland and Weekly Housing, they talk about how close you personally are to, quote, crumbling. That's their words. Um, would it be fair to say that the campaign uh, and you have been on the end of political policing? Definitely. Uh, they've been, and it shows it's there in black and white, it, that we've been surveilled by them and we've been watched in that, so it's quite spooky. But I know that they're just economic actors who have a job to do as well. And, um, I've got a job to do and it's defending this community against that sort of behaviour. Yeah. So I'm going to read you a bit, of the, a bit of those emails between the police and Wheatley. So we've had a discussion and in light of the publicity surrounding this now, we believe it would not be in the best interest of Police Scotland or Wheatley Homes for us to then arrest him, that's you, for having his photo taken by the BBC outside of the block. And then they say, given what Blank said last week at the meeting about Mr O'Neill crumbling and they go on to mm. orchestrate a visit to your flat. Aye, there's a few things there because that, that one is police talking and referring to a meeting that they had about me and so I find that we'll have then followed that up with a subject access request to Police Scotland that hasn't really turned anything on myself other than just basic uh, details about the, <coughs> the arrest for occupying the flats. It seems like Mayor is there and they've not produced that. Um, aye, and the other aspects to it there are shameful really. Um, the, like the community improvement partnership was to tackle antisocial behaviour but it has behaved antisocially really and, and how it's played out. Um, but you need to be unfazed by it because it's clearly uncalled for. Yeah. Well, in the second part of the email, the police ask Wheatley if there's anything that they would like to put over as their words during that meeting they have with you. Right. Um, so that's active collusion in the sense that the police are taking their lines from right. the Housing Association. And then in that meeting they have with you, you have no right to a solicitor, no right to representation. That's it, because I, I, was, I was tricked into the meeting really. I was. I wasn't told that they were going to be there, the police, and uh, the type that we have in Winford, they don't wear uniform, uh, they don't drive in police motors and that, so it just seemed like they were like trainee housing officers or something, but obviously it became clear with the line of question and interrogation really that they put me under. Um, and a meeting, by the way, that I thought was going to be about something else completely, about like normal housing issues. Yeah. Uh, that's the type of tactics that they use, obviously, to take you by surprise and uh, make you crumble, but unlucky for them, it just strengthened my resolve because I've got good neighbours around me and um, people up their flats who need uh, social justice, so that's that sort of matters. It just shows you the, the influence that we really have in Scotland, which I don't think even I had known the extent of it until this campaign. Um, it just seems that these business people dictate the political agenda and policy in Scotland and the, the police and that just take their cues for, for these entities that have privatised communities for far too long. So it's been a learning curve and it's been a shameful episode I think for Scotland and what it's let happen. What's next for the campaign? <clears throat> uh, well, get a meeting in a couple of days and uh, the committee will probably discuss that and have great ideas again. We've had recent political support um, and it's just about finding the next uh, piece of momentum that we can use to keep going and um, we have a legal challenge ongoing so that's coming to our head I think on the 8th of August we'll find out um, if the council plan to defend this decision in any way or just uh, wash their hands with it. So probably the legal challenge will, will, take, uh, will come to the forefront in the coming months. And obviously we're actively looking to, to take action to the end because we're, we're on the right side of history and we've, we've came too far now to let it go.